if you are the best choice for the Democrats in 2020, why didn't President Obama endorse you? I asked President Obama not to endorse, and he doesn't want to. This we should. Whoever wins this nomination should win it on their own merits. Yeah, that doesn't even pass the laugh test. Hi, it's Pastor Marty from the Afternoon Drive. Welcome to the Monday edition here on YouTube. So President Joe Biden hasn't received a nomination or even a thumbs up or a, I think he could do a really good job from the guy that he served with for eight years as his vice president, Barack Obama, is not going to say anything positive or pro-Joe because Joe doesn't want him to. Joe wants to win this one all by himself, and he doesn't need any help from what, the black guy? He doesn't need any help from the president that a lot of Democrats and progressives still like. He doesn't think, what, it's going to be much of a contest with the death squad and the clowns and the clown car that are out there just to eviscerate him because he's not radical enough, he's not extreme enough, he's not really one of them. And they're just going to let him have the nomination. What does he think, he's Hillary? He's going to get coronated? Or is the DNC fix in already? Why hasn't Obama endorsed Biden? It's really simple. Obama doesn't want to. Obama doesn't want to, and Obama is not going to. It's really that simple. Let me take you back in history a little bit. When John F. Kennedy was running against Richard Nixon, as you remember, Nixon had served as President Eisenhower's vice president. And one of the campaign ads that the Kennedy campaign ran against Nixon very deceptive ad, and trying to make it appear that Eisenhower didn't like Nixon. In fact, that Eisenhower thought that Nixon was, well, kind of a dope. A reporter recently asked President Eisenhower this question about Mr. Nixon's experience. I just wondered if you could give us an example of a major idea of his that you had adopted in that role as the, as the decider and, uh, and final... Uh, if you give me a week, I might think of one. I don't remember. Because... <laughs> President Eisenhower could not remember, but the voters will remember. For real leadership in the 60s, help elect Senator John F. Kennedy, President. An incredibly deceptive ad. What? From Democrats? I realize when we invoke the name John Kennedy, it's almost like invoking deity. Yeah, okay. I, I, I get that. That that's... that's the way he's been memorialized. And by the way, out of Democratic presidents, uh, Kennedy, on a lot of areas, in particular when it came to his patriotism and his fiscal responsibility, uh, there were things that we could say yes to. He certainly isn't today's Democrat. That we have to clearly differentiate. But he was a Democrat nonetheless, uh, his dad was a bootlegger. That's how old man Kennedy made his million. So, you know, shading the truth and the law and, you know, was, was not unbeknownst to the Camelot Kennedy dynasty. Just ask Ted Kennedy and what happened at the Chappaquiddick. Yeah. Um, so the fact that this ad is deceptive, and remember all the dead people that voted for Kennedy in Chicago, whenever I see a line of hearse, I never think it's a funeral. I always think, oh, it must be voting day. Democrats are on their way to the polls. Um, very deceptive ad, because Walter Cronkite, who was, of course, considered the, the gold standard of what the news media, what journalism was supposed to be, especially, especially to that Vietnam-era liberal that opposed the war in Vietnam. And, of course, Mr. Cronkite, back in the day when reporters didn't give opinions, they just reported the facts, just gave you the news, just gave you the details, uh, he took to the airwaves to, well, come out against the Vietnam War. I can remember as a kid... 
Walter Cronkite was not allowed on the television set in our home. My father had no use for him. But nonetheless, Walter Cronkite sits down here in this clip with President Eisenhower and not only asks him about Richard Nixon, but actually states, you've been very clear in your support of Mr. Nixon. Mr. President, in, in your uh, book and in other writings and uh, public uh, pronouncements, uh, you have left no doubt uh, how sincerely you feel that Vice President Nixon is perhaps the best qualified man uh, for the presidency in the sense of, of experience and, uh, and the apprenticeship he served under you. I would think he'd be one of the likely persons to, uh, to be uh, examined and maybe an approach because he is, after all, a very knowledgeable and a very uh, courageous type of uh, fellow. Uh, the one man that I was worried about uh, particularly uh, was uh, uh, Dick Nixon out in, uh, in California. And I went out there across the continent just because for that one evening, I think they're having a, a one of those closed circuit uh, affairs. And I went out there just to make a talk for, for uh, him. And I put these, my favorable opinions into the most emphatic language I possibly could. And I've done it more than once in, in front of uh, press conferences, as you people well know. Wow, a random act of real journalism and truth telling. So, we have this, this, this portrait that the media even back in the day and the Democrats back in the day tried to paint that there was this rift between Nixon, between Eisenhower, that Eisenhower thought he was kind of a dupe and a stoop and, you know, didn't listen to him, didn't talk to him. And yet Eisenhower in his own words said, He's incredibly knowledgeable, very capable. In fact, I have written about it in books. I have stated it in interviews and in the media. And I even flew out to California to be with him during a, a closed circuit interview just so people could see that I stand with Dick Nixon. Okay. Fast forward to now. When Biden was being called a racist by members of the Democratic Party. Where was Obama at least saying he's not a racist? Now, Biden claims he doesn't want Obama's endorsement, doesn't need it. Is that white privilege saying he doesn't need the thumbs up or the approval from a black man? So I could twist it that way, and no doubt there would be some Democratic politicians, in particular Democrats from the state of Georgia, seem to be rather um, insane and emotional. Uh, they might jump on that and say, yeah, that's what Joe Biden's saying. He doesn't need the endorsement from the black man. But Obama coming out and saying that Biden is not racist, you have to look at the fact that at the time he voted against the public funding of mandatory busing, it's what most black constituents in this country wanted. They didn't want their kids bust to other districts, and they didn't want other kids bust into their districts. It was overwhelmingly unpopular, even among black voters. But there's no historical context ever given by today's media, and certainly not by those people that he's going to win fair and square against that are running for the nomination. You know, they actually want to be president, Joe. Do you? Maybe that's the other reason Obama isn't coming out and saying anything favorable about you. You know, he said favorable things about Hillary Rodham Clinton, and where did that get him? <laughs> he saw every one of his policies, other than Obamacare, completely dismantled by Donald Trump. So, is he going to go with old Sleepy Joe? No. He's waiting to see which one of these progressives looks like they're going to take it. And then he'll make an endorsement. But it wouldn't have even been an endorsement for him to come out and say, my guy is not a racist. Look, he served with me for eight years. Let me tell you the things he helped me get accomplished. Obama has done none of that. And that's not even an endorsement. He's not endorsing Joe because he doesn't want to. 
and Democrats that still hang on the words of Obama and Michelle as if they are the incarnation of the love child of Oprah Winfrey, speaking all things politically correct and doing things that you and your Democrat liberal utopian wanted done? If he ain't for Joe, you shouldn't be either. That's my rant for the day. Hey, thanks for tuning this way. Make sure you smack the bell to get notification of my next rant. Give me a thumbs up, a like, and share this video as YouTube continues to mess with our algorithm. And make sure you subscribe to the channel.